Do you feel like you're wasting time trying to figure out what to study rather than actually studying? Well, I help aspiring professional engineers like you to become sure that you'll pass the PE exam on the first try. And this is the series where every day I give you one insight, one rule of thumb, one key distinction, or one fundamental idea so that little by little you can get clear on what matters and how to focus your valuable time and energy. In today's daily insight, we're going to talk about total resistance and the overall heat transfer coefficient. So this is a classic heat transfer situation and it applies to a number of different geometries. So let's talk about a few examples. You could have something like a composite wall where you have multiple materials, like maybe you have sheetrock and behind that there's insulation and then behind that there's bricks on the outside or wood or some other material. So you have these different layers with different thermal properties to get through. Another example would be a pipe or a duct, which is insulated. So you have to go from an airstream or a water stream to some material, maybe metal, uh, and then finally insulation and out to the air. Or you could have something like a window and maybe it's double pane glass with an air gap in between. So you have these film conditions to account for uh, where there's different heat transfer mechanisms at work, like you have conduction through a material, but you may have convection at the film or at the boundary of that material. And then you have radiation if there's something like an air gap, and especially if there's large temperature differences. So let's just draw a kind of generic situation so we have something to talk through. The overall principle is that you have some temperature on one side, which is different from the temperature on the other side. So there's a gradient, a thermal gradient. There's a tendency for heat to want to travel from a high temperature space to a low temperature space. So if A is higher, then there's a drive for heat to want to go through in this direction. And each of these materials along the way have their own thermal properties. So maybe they have a thermal conductivity, maybe they have a resistance per unit of thickness if it's something like insulation. So there's a number of different ways that that resistance can be described. But suffice it to say that for each and every material, we can distill it down to the resistance of material one, the resistance of material two, and so on and so forth. And again, this is applicable regardless of if it's conduction, convection, or radiation. And then we take the sum of those individual resistances. So we have summation, where the total resistance is R1 plus R2 plus R3 dot 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 for as many resistances as there are. And then once, once we get that total resistance, we can define something called the overall heat transfer coefficient, which is given the variable U, which is one over the sum of those resistances. So it has inverse units. The overall heat transfer coefficient is typically given in units of BTU per hour degree F per foot squared, and the units for these resistances would just be the inverse of that. And why is that useful? Because we can then plug into this formula, which says that the total heat transfer through all of these resistive materials and surfaces and films and air gaps and whatever else we have going on is equal to that overall heat transfer coefficient, which takes into consideration all those individual resistances times the area times the delta T. And that's a very popular and powerful formula that gets used again and again throughout heat transfer, especially because of its ability to deal with different modes of heat transfer. So there's a lot more we could say about that, specifically in the realm of conduction, convection, and radiation, but suffice it to say that this is a generic overall formula that we can go to, and that the particulars of any given problem that we're looking to solve come down to how we get to these individual resistances, which depends on the geometry and the modes of heat transfer. So that is today's daily insight on total resistance and overall heat transfer coefficient. All right, guys, I hope this video was useful. When you're ready to start putting these ideas into practice, head over to mechanicalpeexamprep.com. There are tons of original practice problems with detailed video solutions that are easy to watch and the course previews are free, so go check it out. And until next time, happy studying.